everyone. Good afternoon. Um, hope you're all having a great first day at Dreamforce. My name is Katie Gannon. I'm a senior demo engineer. I'm really excited to be here. Every year I'm blown away at how cool Dreamforce gets. So in my role as a senior demo engineer, um, I, my challenge is to create unique solutions for customer demos and proof of concepts, but with the challenge of turning these things around in a very short time frame, often only a couple days. So today I'll be talking about the Internet of Things and an introduction to AppCloud to show you how you can get started with your IoT journey today. And before we get started, I just have a quick obligatory safe harbor statement. You'll be seeing this slide a lot this week. Um, it basically says, please make any investment in purchasing decisions based on the features and functionality that we have in Salesforce today, as there may be forward-looking statements in this presentation. OK, so let's kick things off with a bit of background on the Internet of Things. While the Internet of Things is a pretty hot topic right now, it's not an entirely new concept. And we're kind of drowning in the inf amount of information that we now have from our devices, our customers, inanimate and living things alike. So all this information that we already need is out there to, and available to create meaningful interactions. And one of the things that Salesforce excels at and sets us apart is being able to grab that relevant and actionable data, bring that into the platform so that we can create real-time rules and uh, trigger actions to create proactive and great engagement, um, and always being able to stay one step ahead and making our customers feel empowered. So all this looks good on a slide, and IoT is said to be the next technical revolution the new age of the customer. So it makes me ask, why aren't we all on this IoT journey already? And there's a few things that I've heard floating around. So one is IoT is too complex. IoT is costly to implement from a time and development perspective. And we're still five to 10 years out from IoT, from that reality. Um, I don't need to worry about it today. OK, but there's already an estimated 1.9 billion devices connected to this Internet of Things. And it's all accessible. And today, we're lucky that we have so many different channels that we can leverage to bring in this connected experiences to our customers and our employees. So we've all heard of stories like the connected toothbrush, and, um, and Fitbit is another example that we like to highlight here at Dreamforce for their IoT solution. Um, and we also have things like Philip Hue Lights, the Nest, and our smart uh, security and lock systems. And when packaged all together, make up the Dream Home, which if you guys have a chance to check out, it's in Moscone Center um, in the Expo. So that's a very cool story um, that you should take a look at. Um, so these implementations don't have to be complex. And even without messing around with any type of hardware like Raspberry Pis or Arduinos, I can still show off the impact and benefits of an IoT solution and what it can provide. So I'm going to create a scenario where I'm going to be connecting Carvoyant, which can turn your car into a smart and connected device. Um, it's also one of the easiest ways to integrate all your vehicle's data into the rest of the world. Um, and we're also going to use Zively, which is an IoT platform that's specifically designed to accelerate the creation of connected products. Um, it also helps avoid the costs and the pitfalls that often come with a DIY approach. And finally, the last piece of puzzle is Salesforce, of course. Um, so with connecting these three, we can see just how quickly we can turn data into some of those meaningful actions using very minimal code. So 
So this is kind of IoT for the rest of us. Um, we're going to take a look at Lauren Boyle. Now, Lauren Boyle is a brand new sales rep. She was given a company car and a list of new clients. It's already stressful being the newest person on the team, so Lauren wants to prove herself, and she needs to plan her day smart. Luckily for her, her company car is c connected to the Internet of Things. So this means that as she's going around from customer me meeting to customer meeting, um, her uh, sales activity is automatically being logged in Salesforce based on her location. So she doesn't have to worry about the little logistics of her day. She can focus 100% of her time around the customer. So Lauren can't believe how smoothly her day is running. That is until her car check engine light comes on. And if Lauren's anything like me, she has no clue what to do. Um, she, but she knows she can't be interrupted. So she continues with her customer meeting as planned. And just as she's walking into her customer meeting on Salesforce One, she can see that her car has already identified the problem and has logged a case on her behalf. By the time the meeting is over, Lauren can see another notification pushed to her Salesforce One mobile app that the case has been resolved. Um, directions to the nearest auto body are already waiting for her, and the car rental is all arranged for her for, by our company. So Lauren never has to miss a beat in her day, and she's able to make her last meeting right on time to close her first opportunity. So let's take a look at how this all plays out. So I'm going to load up this traffic simulator from Carvoyant, which is going to allow me to kind of fast forward through Lauren's day so we can speed up and take a look at what's happening. So I'm going to load in Lauren's path that comes right across the waterfront here in San Francisco. So I can see from point A to point B and all the points that she has to hit in between to make her customer meetings. She has back-to-back -back meetings. It's a very busy schedule. So let me simulate her day. And it's going to load right in Salesforce. And on this map, we can see this dot updating across uh, the waterfront and to her locations. And because we talked about that connected car experience and her activity history, here's Lauren's record page. And once I refresh this, I should see all of her customer site visits being logged. So if I drill into a record detail, I can see that her time is being logged, her location, and I can even see the trip detail from point A to point B of this leg. So we know that something bad happened near the end of her day. Uh, her car check engine light came on. So if I go ahead and click in on this point, we can see that alert that her car engine light is on. Um, we can identify it's Lauren's new BMW company car. And so now we're going to hop into the second piece, which is a Zively simulator. And I'm using Zively as a great visual interface to, uh, to show off uh, what the connected car is doing. So here we can see that this would be Lauren's Salesforce One phone. And we can see her car service appointment is due in, three, in a, one year. Um, but once something happens to the check engine light, we'll turn it on. We can see that this quickly goes down to zero. And she gets a notification that uh, she should take her car in for service as soon as possible. So this is where Lauren doesn't have to stress. She knows that because her, device, her car is connected, everything's going to be taken care of for her. So on the case side, from a service agent perspective, I can monitor this and handle Lauren's problems as they come in. So let me refresh this view.
and I've been having some internet problems with the Wi-Fi here. So let's see. There we go. Okay, so we can see that a new case has been logged. Um, car service required. So as a service agent, I can click into this case, view the details of Lauren's record. I can see that um, this Zively Visual Force piece is going to load right here. And I can see that what's happening in the car, whether the check engine light's coming on or off. I can also see the details about the car. Let's see, Lauren has a black BMW. See the make, the model, the VIN. And now if I switch over to the chatter view, I can also see uh, Lauren's location. So based on her location where this problem happened, I have this sidebar component where I'm pulling in the nearest auto body shops um, to her location. They're sorted by a distance, and I can send Lauren the new directions so she can just take a small detour and be on with the rest of her day. So I'll go ahead and send her the new directions to the San Francisco Auto Repair Center. And once I refresh this page, I should see the new comment. And I mentioned Lauren, hey, Lauren, a, car, a rental car is ready for your pickup. Reroute directions to the San Francisco Auto Repair Center. Um, are, and here's the link right here. So this link, Lauren can directly pull up on her phone, and it'll take her and reroute her directions to the, to the car service where she can pick up her new rental car and carry on with the rest of her day um, just as smoothly as planned. OK. So this is from the demo side. And now let's take a look at kind of what's happening behind the scenes to make all of this work seamlessly. OK, so I talked about Carvoyant. And Carvoyant, with Carvoyant, you can set up a free developer account and get access to all their APIs. They use RESTful APIs to manage the connectivity and flow of data back and forth through your integrated apps, which in our case is Salesforce. Uh, so I've set up a Canvas app with Carvoyant. And if you're not familiar with Canvas, uh, the, with force.com Canvas, you can develop in any language of your choice and easily surface that within Salesforce. So the experience is seamless. It looks like your app is running native and local in Salesforce. And with Canvas, with the Canvas SDK, it's open source package of libraries that also provides simple methods to the Salesforce libraries, like our Chatter API or our REST API. Um, so you can, it's a simple integration. So here is part of the vehicle service. Um, and when we were on that traffic simulator map, sending the simulation of the different points across the waterfront, this is the method that's responsible for listening to an incoming post. And it's going to parse that JSON body. And in this case, listen to an event notification from the Carvoyant platform. And it's going to parse that JSON body and upsert a record into Salesforce based on you know, some of the uh, configurations I set, like name and the latitude and longitude points. So the second piece of the formula that we talked about was Zively. And Zively is really great because it already provides a Salesforce an application for integrating connected products to the service cloud, just like I showed. 
there is an app exchange package that's already out there. You can download it, and there's a one-click Heroku install. You can get it set up with a min in a matter of hours. Um, from, for this use case, I customized it a little further. I was able to grab the simulator code off of GitHub, which is available to everyone. And running it locally, I made some configuration changes. When you first download the code, it looks pretty messy. It's a big file. It looks like a lot of code. But there's actually very few uh, files and lines of code that you have to edit to completely customize the experience and tailor it to your needs. So this is, this is one of the files, maybe the most important piece to configure. And I just added in here Salesforce, my Salesforce user password and security token, which can be found in your advanced uh, user details. Um, so with these configuration environment variables set, all I had to do is run a few commands in the terminal, and it all hooks up into Salesforce. And I can see that my connected devices from Zively are automatically being pulled in as assets and products. The second piece that I changed right here was the actual device information. So Zively already comes with some standard out-of-the-box devices that you can play around with, like the Aero Purifier, HVAC, and solar panel. Here at the top, I added in a connected car, where I also customize the sensors, which I took out here for shortening the code. But it's markup language to NCSS to define where the sensors go, when they light up, um, what rules will create a case in Salesforce, and then uh, the widgets is kind of the piece that you saw on the phone. So that's the timer that ticks down and lets Lauren know that you know, it's time to take her car in. So very minimal changes. Um, and it was very easy to set up. And it feels good when something works on the first compile. So I would always say that this would be option one. Uh, I never had to start from scratch for this project. And I was able to connect to Sales Cloud, Service Cloud. But what else can you do with IoT? You can really extend it to anywhere across our platform. You can connect to every cloud. So where are you going to take your IoT journey? Can you personalize buying with sales? Or you can do device engagement with marketing? or even connect a layer of AI to identify upsell opportunities. OK. So I have listed a few links about Carvoyant and Zively developer resources. Um, Zively also has a booth over near the IoT cabin if you want to see more demos from them. and. That's all I have. If you have any questions, I'll, I can take those as well. Thank you.